want more time to yourself, want to be more productive, then waking up at 5am is for you. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm a mum of two. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And as soon as they open their eyes, I am on for the day and if you're a parent you know exactly what i mean so this has literally been life-changing getting up at 5 a.m in the morning we've been getting up at 5 30 for about three months now and then we decided let's go 5 a.m so in the past two weeks we've got up at 5 a.m in the morning and it's fantastic here are 10 tips so that you can do it too so tip number one is you need a set bedtime so Dave looked up this app it's called sleepy time basically you type in what time you want to wake up so for us that's 5 a.m. and then it says you need to be in bed lights out at quarter past nine actually on the website I had a look on this and it says that you need to be asleep by 9 30 which is right but on average adults take about 14 minutes to fall asleep so we have to have lights out at quarter past nine so that you definitely asleep by 9 30 because the average adult sleep cycle is an hour and a half. I thought I'd show you step by step how to do this. So first in Google type sleepy time, then this page will come up here, click on that. And then once you get into it, then change the time. So it has what time you want to wake up at. So I'm going five o'clock here, but if you needed to do it the other way around and say, what time do you need to be asleep? You can do that. And then once you type it in, it'll come up and it shows you the different hours that you need to be asleep. But as it says under here, you need to give yourself 14 minutes to get asleep. So what sleepy time does is it works backwards in sleep cycles. Waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle leaves you tired and groggy, but waking up in between cycles wakes you up feeling refreshed and alert. I'll leave the references in the description box below if you want to go check it out and have a look at it for yourself. I don't want to leave this tip without saying it is so important that you use your sleep cycle that hour and a half time because then when you wake up at 5 a.m you'll be in a light state of sleep and when you wake up in a light state of sleep you're not that tired you know what it's like when you're in a deep sleep and you wake up whether it's one of your kids crying you're just so groggy it's so hard to get out of so by following these sleep cycles at around five o'clock you're going to be in a light sleep state and you're going to be ready to wake up and then you won't feel so tired when you do so according to scientific evidence sleep cycles are about an hour and a half for an adult that's why it's really important that you have a set bedtime and you consistently go to sleep at that time so adults on average need about seven to nine hours sleep so we are aiming for seven and a half hours sleep each night number two is you need a bedtime routine a wind down routine so our routine is half an hour before lights out we have no screens so no TV phones iPads none of those because according to the sleep foundation it actually delays the production of your sleep inducing hormone melatonin which is needed for the circadian rhythm which is needed for sleep so at 8.45, we don't look at our screens anymore and then brush our teeth, wash our face, read a book in bed before turning the lights off at quarter past nine. Sometimes earlier, some will even say earlier, but for us, half an hour works. I know I've tested this and I looked at my phone in bed and I took longer to go to sleep. So tip three, screens off 30 minutes before lights out. So lights out at 9.15, I must admit, I will often do it earlier. I mean, by that time of the day, having had such a productive day, I am tired and I'm ready for sleep. I just had to jump on here during the editing process because I didn't go into enough detail about drinks before bed. And it's really important because you don't want to interrupt your sleep overnight by getting up and going to the toilet and coming back to bed. We want a nice restful sleep to be waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning. So some things to consider, one, how late you can have a drink before going to bed so you won't need to wake up. It's gonna be different for every individual. So do what's right for you. Number two, alcohol can affect a restful sleep. So I was actually having a little bit of a read and it was saying that the alcohol can disturb your sleep a little bit because it's processing the sugars. And the third thing to consider is when do you have to stop having caffeinated drinks during the day so that when it comes to bedtime, you can go to sleep at that time. Like I said, with waking up at 5 a.m., 
we are waking up earlier so you may need to stop drinking caffeinated drinks earlier alrighty on to the next tip number four to succeed in waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, you need to know why. What is your purpose for getting up? For me, it gives me time to edit my YouTube videos. So I get up and I just start doing that. Dave, he gets up and does some exercise in the morning uninterrupted. So know your why and you're more likely to stick to getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Number five is have a positive mindset about it. So when you go into bed at night, think I'm gonna be able to get up in the morning, I'm gonna be able to have some time for myself, it's gonna be great. You're more likely to wanna get up in the morning too when your alarm goes off. So don't have a negative mindset about this. You are the one who's choosing to get up at 5 a.m. So have a positive mindset to help you succeed. Number six is have an accountability partner. So for me, Dave and I both get up at the same time, so we are able to talk about the struggles of getting up some mornings when we've been woken up overnight and we haven't got our seven and a half hours sleep, but also we can have those successes. By nine o'clock in the morning, we have been up for four hours and all the things we have done and achieved, but it doesn't have to be a partner. It could be a friend. If you're gonna meet someone at the gym, 5.30 in the morning, you're more likely to get there if you've got an accountability partner who's gonna meet you there. Number seven is prepare for the morning and what you want to do. So for me, I have my computer set up with my headphones. For Dave, he has his stuff that he needs for exercise. If you were going to the gym, get your gym clothes out. So prepare for the next day. We also have a cup of coffee, which we have in our front room instead of in the kitchen, so there's no chance of waking the kids. Number eight is just do it. When your alarm goes off in the morning, just get up. Whether you say feet on the floor, whether you go three, two, one, up, whether you put your phone over the other side of the room so that you have to get up to turn it off, whatever you do, just get out of bed. Number nine, give yourself three days. So personally, I've found with transitions with the kids, the second day is the hardest and you just wanna give up, but by the third day, it's like a new routine. And I found the same with waking up at 5 a.m. Day two for me was the hardest, day one it was exciting. <laughs> day two was the hardest and day three it had become a habit and I was enjoying the rewards of getting up at 5 a.m. So don't give up day two. And number 10 is enjoy your time, you deserve it. I had to jump back on to just say, I am cheering for you, you have got this. Once you've done it a couple of days, it'll be so worth it. That productive time in the morning, that me time where you can do what you want. So you are literally getting a head start on the rest of the world. So you've got this, comment down below if you're gonna give it a try, we will cheer you on. We are very supportive here in this community and I love replying to comment. Thanks heaps for watching. If you need some activities to entertain your kids throughout the day, here I'm sharing 30 I did when my daughter was one and when she was two. Thanks for watching, bye.